me and Uncle Dougie were the ones who created OSTF, Original Sovereign Tribal Federation. No, that was us. He was with us when we did it. No one wanted to do it Mark's shit because they've not heard Mark's shit before. We said, yeah, okay, so you got paper. What do you got before the paper? Nothing. Okay, so you got nothing. You got up to 1788. How do you do anything from 1835 back? And then he said, oh, I put it on paper, I do this. I said, oh, yeah, but the paper came here in 18, and 1788. And it goes back as far. So I, I made, I said, I can take it and um, put it into a messy stick and a law stick and then paint a, a treaty skin, uh, which is a kangaroo skin at the time. This whole thing was about getting the stolen generation and bringing them back to the tribes and so they all become one again. The whole reason why we did OSTF was because I was then going to get all the stolen generation of tribal groups, senior elders together with the senior lawmen. They don't deal with stolen generation because they don't deal with little boys and girls who are not initiated. So I was creating a pathway to bring them together say, well, you can't, they can't be held accountable for something they didn't do. It was done to them. Let's go, I'll create the pathway to bring them together. I went from, from New South Wales there, got initiated, become a lawman, to come back down here. Now I can get people from my area, from down here, to take them back up there, get them initiated, bring them back home. Now they can walk into the archives of their own places and see their own people, speak their own languages. They can get all of those recordings that have been done by the archive. Because no one's, unless you're initiated, you're not allowed to see it. That's the point. Only initiated can see, and that's the law. They walk in there, show that they're, and can prove they've got initiation. They have law, they're not allowed to see it. And then we were working with Mark, and we gave him, because we had, myself and Uncle Dougie got skin name, and Mark had nothing. So while we were traveling with him, and we started doing um, speaking, I would introduce myself with a skin name. Uncle Doug would do the same thing, and he would introduce himself as Mark of Mercury. We would see his face drop down and the sadness. So we said, oh, we'll give you a skin name. And so I said, you're my brother. So I gave him the same name as me. But in the end, you've got to come to the desert to earn the name. The name's got as uh, it's connected to stories, to songs, to land, to country. Yeah, and yep, well, that'll happen. He said, yep, yep, no problem, blah, 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 talking shit. I went back to Sydney and uh, to Uncle Dougie's and Mark was here and he didn't like the fact we went over to New Zealand to do work and he got me set up. So he got, he was dealing with a guy called, um, uh, what was his name, uh, another Maori, Maori guy, um, um, it, it was, no, Blue, Blue Gum, I was working with. Um, uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Got these two Maori boys to contact me and say um, they wanted to do a treaty with me because the king in New Zealand wanted me to go back and do a ceremony and do a treaty with them over there. They just went, yeah, no worries. And so they came over to pick me up with my implements, my, my um, messy stick, law stick, and the implements. And um, said, oh, would you just go to a park and show us and we'll do a ceremony? And so I took them around the corner to a school, just in the back of the school. I laid it out, told them these stories, and they said, close your eyes, we'll do a sign on your face. So I closed my eyes, and the king hit me with my eyes closed, trying to jump all over me while I was, I, when I hit the ground. I defended myself, jumped up, and said, what the fuck's going on here? And they, they said, quick, grab the stuff and run. And they grabbed the messy stick, the law stick, and the treaty skin, the kangaroo skin, and they run like dogs. And they said, when they were swinging, this one's for Mark McMurtry and this one's for Jerry Prust, which is the guy who was teaching him all of that law. I ran back to the house. I was about four blocks, five blocks away. I ran back to the house uh, to ring the police. And Jerry Prust had already put out that um, as if um, the sticks were always in Mark's hands and uh, as if... Uh, Apparently, I was given original pay, Aboriginal payback. How do you get Aboriginal payback from two Maoris who fucking king hits you with their eyes closed?
So what's happened is, Uncle Dougie, I, after that happened, I sent a message to Uncle to him saying, you're not Jagamara no more. You can't use the name. I took it away. Uncle Dougie did the same thing. Said he's not Bunangari. Yeah. Gunnambari, his name's not Gunnambari, which is possum. Gunnambari is possum because it means, because the possums are the ones who clear the path. Clean, keep all the tracks. So when they go to, if a um, predator comes, they can run back along their path and there's not sticks in the way. Keep all the pathways clean. That's what's called Gunnambari. So they called him Gunnambari because he was clearing the path of all of the fraud when he was working with us. I was in Broadbeach when that happened. They created a faction within the, the Githabu tribe, which is Dougie's tribe, and got his his brother-in-law, because Dougie was given the was given the mantle for the tribe, because he's the only one who kept the culture. Speaks a language, song, dance, and so on. No one else in the tribe has he passed the mantle to Doug. Now, now then, Mark, because Doug didn't like the idea that me, that Dougie stood beside me when I went over to New Zealand with him. Because before I turned up, Dougie was traveling with Mark all the time. When I turned up, Dougie just said, fucking, yeah, you, you talk a lot, but you, you can't actually back it up. Yeah, I bought in the desert, Lob, and I backed my shit up. That would have been eight months, nine months, maybe after that. We came back, and then he abused the man who gave us the bus. We called him a sellout, and he, this guy uh, bought us a, a 40000 45000 spent, uh, I think, $30,000 on the bus, spent another $15,000 and, and gave us fifteen grand to put it, put it together and do it up. Then we traveled around and come back, and then um, he asked Mark for to finish his end of the bargain, and Mark called him a traitor and, threw the, and gave him the bus back. Time to take the bus. So I got put in jail because Mark didn't follow. He didn't do what he said he was going to do. What happened is when we started travelling around Australia with a bus, he told us we had uh, that he had got all his investors when he got his brother, who's a gay, to start making ice in the place he was staying at, which is on Uncle Dougie's place, in a 20-ton shipping container. And they're selling it to Uncle Dougie's people. We only found that out afterward when we got back that he was selling ice to Dougie's mob. That's how we got around Australia. Kicked him off and get the ball kicked him off the land because they busted open the shipping container and found his, all his bloody kitchen, his ice, ki ice lab. His brother was making it on, on, on get the ball land, and that's why they kicked him off. Yeah, Tony, say one. Yeah, he's selling ice to everyone. He's making it. Put it this way. Me and Uncle Dougie could never understand how it was that it, Mark McMurtry could open up a can, I am um, a bottle of the, uh, scotch or rum, and polish the whole thing off, drink and talk and carry on with us and not be drunk. And I'd be passed out drunk off my fucking nut, go to sleep at fucking three o'clock in the morning. He's still wide awake. I didn't get it. Used to be a Christian pastor. Oh, yeah. How do you think he knows all about the coat of arms and all that other bullshit? Yeah, he learned it through the Bible. Now, he's a sucker punch. He still doesn't understand the fucking where the law comes from. Did you know that he um, slept with his best friend's daughter on her 18th birthday while she was drunk because his best friend was passed out? And his best friend still doesn't know it. He had his best friend staying in his backyard in a, in a caravan. Yeah, if his best friend found out, he'd shoot him. Me and Uncle Dougie were at a, a case with him, with uh, a couple. They had a six million dollar property. They paid him three grand or something to do their case for him. And he said, "Yep, I got this." Blah 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 blah. Me and Dougie are sitting there watching. He's sitting in front of us. No good. He's talking to the judge, and then he turns around. 
and start saying, oh, we got this, we got this. We look up and we're looking at the judge, looking at the back of his head. Well, he's saying, oh, we got this, don't worry, blah, blah. And we're looking at him, then looking back at the judge, looking at him. Then she just starts tapping a finger on the on the the, le- the bench. Then he turns back around and goes, yep, yep, blah, blah. And she says, oh, so, um, so, Mark, so what are you going to do with this? This is, oh, I'm going to do this. This is, no, I, I, I decide that you you have no grounds for this. This blah, blah, case dismissed back. Lord him. Mark Mamerchi knows his own behaviors and sits back and looks and pats himself on the back. He's amazing.